أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك وحبيبك محمد في الأولين وصل وسلم وبارك على عبدك وحبيبك محمد في الآخرين وصل وسلم وبارك على عبدك وحبيبك محمد في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين الله سبحانه وتعالى says in the Quran يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. He said in the Quran, O who you have believed, fear Allah as He should be feared, and do not die except in a state of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. It's my honor to be around this beautiful community. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you all. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve you and to preserve your family. Ameen, ameen, ya Rabbal Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا If you would count the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will never be able to finish the list. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has showered us with so many blessings. Allah says in the Quran, وَأَسْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتَهُ وَأَسْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتَهُ ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has, has bestowed among us blessings that we know and blessings that we don't even know. Yes, there's so many, many blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and we're not even aware of. And today, inshallah ta'ala, I want to focus on two of these blessings. The first blessing is the blessing of Iman, of the faith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fact that we're here today, we're submitting to our Lord and we're coming because that's part of our worship, part of our duty as a Muslim, the faith as a na'mah. And we're gonna be focusing on this insha'Allah ta'ala. And then the second blessing that I wanna focus on today insha'Allah ta'ala is the blessing of the health, of sihah, right? So 
Subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with two main purposes. The first purpose is to worship Him and ta'bud Allah. This is one of the maqasid, one of the purposes of our existence as human beings. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, that was stated in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Indeed, we, we've created mankind not for anything but to worship me. So this is one of the purposes, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the second purpose, and we all know about the second purpose, it's to leave a mark in this world, to change this world for the better, is to actually leave an impact in this world. So to worship him and to leave an impact. So worshiping him is one of the purposes so what happens if I'm missing my own purpose? You know what's interesting? Those who commit suicide and they leave some notes, there is a common comment that they always write in their notes before they commit suicide. They always say, I don't know why am I here, right? They're missing the point. They don't know what is the purpose of being here in this earth. They're missing the, 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 the core of their existence. Brothers and sisters, there is one show that I used to watch, right? It, it, all, it, it used to be on CNN. The name of the show, and I, I believe that the younger, uh, the, the younger audience here will, will, will know this show, uh, no reservations is the name of the show. You know, uh, he's a chef. He travels all over the world. He tastes different food. He gets to, to see different people. He's, mashallah, very rich, so he got the wealth. He's, mashallah, very healthy, so he got the wealth. He has two beautiful daughters and his wife, so he got a family. And he's very famous, so he got the fame. He is not missing anything. He got everything he wants from this dunya. And subhanallah, they found him a few months ago, they found him, uh, he hanged himself in his hotel room in Italy. Billah. He committed suicide. And that was a shock for me. Like, we, we, I, I want to know what is the main reason for him to actually uh, act with this, with this insane way, even if he basically has everything in this world. And subhanAllah, he was a very defender, like a big defender of atheism. He, 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 he used to defend atheism until his death, right? And I believe that that what, what led him to actually uh, commit suicide is the fact that he, he had this internal conflict See, if Allah has created us with faith, with fitrah, we all know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has, uh, has given us, has created us with fitrah. And it, it is inside us. It's, it's, it's nailed in our hearts. We were created with fitrah. Meaning that we believe in God automatically. If we take someone and we, 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 we put him in a forest, since younger age, and then we come to him after 15 years, this man will actually believe that there is God. Yes, he has no knowledge about him. He has no, uh, uh, you know, he, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't know how to describe who is God, the names of God, the attributes of God. He will not, never be able to do that. But he has this faith in his heart. Maybe he's not able to translate what he feels in words, but he has it. This is the fitrah. If we go against this fitrah, then we will never find this peace and tranquility in our hearts. This is, this is, this is a definite conclusion. We will never be able to, 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 for, for our hearts to feel this content, this happiness, this tranquility, this peace. Brothers and sisters, we all go through a lot. We all have sort of pain. 
And what makes us so strong and resilient is the fact that we have this belief in our hearts that makes us actually go over all these hardship and difficulties. Falhamdulillahi ala ni'matil Islam. And we really need to actually teach our, our children the aspect of the essential knowledge, which is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as I said last, yesterday in the Khatra, based on the Yaqeen Institute research, 23% from our American Muslim youth are not identified as Muslims. So this is, this is a red flag right here. The fact that they're, they're missing, they're losing their Iman. They're, they're losing their faith. And so many questions, inshallah, today we're going to, you know, talk more in depth, inshallah, in the lecture in the night today, inshallah, ta'ala, about how to raise my children in non-Muslim country. There is so much to say about this. But one thing that the scholars said, in order to strengthen the Iman within our hearts and within our kids' hearts, we have to start with the knowledge of Allah first. Who is Allah? And then when we get to know Him, we will fall in love with Him. We will connect to Him. We'll have this attachment with Him. And then when we get this attachment, then we will be able to worship Him. This is the right process. If we started with the wrong process, I force my kid to come to the masjid, and I force him to be in the first, uh, the first row, and I force him to pray, and he doesn't know who he is praying for, he will never be able to focus. He will play around, he will, he will move. Why? Because there is no attachment. He doesn't know who he is talking to. So we're starting the wrong process. So again, as the scholar stated, we start with the knowledge of Allah. Once they get the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we will feel in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hubbillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once we have this hub, this love towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they will be able to worship Him. Tayyib, how can we, what's the knowledge of Allah that we're, you're talking about? How can I actually teach my sons and daughters the knowledge of Allah? This is a question you might be asking yourself now. Knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it, it, as the scholar said, there are three branches of monotheism. Three branches of monotheism. Tawheed al rububiya to believe that Allah is the Rabb, is the Creator, is the Lord. Tawheed al uluhiya to believe that Allah is the only worthy of worship. And then Tawheed al asma wa sifat to believe in the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the attributes. And this is the most important branch of monotheism. Tawheed al-Asma wa sifat To get to know more about Allah's names, Allah, Allah's beautiful names, and Allah's beautiful attributes. To, to have a conversation with your own son. Who is Allah? One of his names is the most merciful, Ar-Rahman. So you talk to him about how merciful he is. You tell him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, as he stated in Sahih, as stated in Sahih al-Bukhari, and it is Hadith uh, 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 Qudusi, meaning that Allah has said, has said it. Allah said that He kept 99 parts of His mercy on the Day of Judgment, and He sent down just one part of His mercy. So all the mercy that we have towards each other, all the mercy that the mothers have towards their own kids, all the mercy that the animals have toward, towards each other, it's just one part of Allah's mercy. Then imagine Rahmatullah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment. Billahi alayk, if you have this quick conversation with your own son about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then you talk to him about Ismillah al-Aleem, Allah is the most knowledgeable, right? And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most knowledgeable. You tell him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the the one who knows if an ant walks in the depth of the night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has full knowledge about it. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most knowledgeable. One of his beautiful names is Al-Alim. So many things to say about Al-Alim. Start with this. Basic things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes.
One of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beautiful name is Al Malik, the owner. So when we talk about our concept of ownership, you know, the most successful man and the most successful owner in this world, you know, for example, IBM company. IBM company has around 30,000 employees. The owner of this company, he actually has authority and power over 33,000 employees, right? But if you look at this owner, this owner doesn't necessarily know the names of the 33,000 employees. Why? Because, you know, he has departments and each department, you know, is, has a team leader and the, and the leader is managing this and he's just overseeing the whole thing. And hypothetically, if he knows the 33,000 employees, he doesn't necessarily know their wives' names and their children's names and their teachers' names. It's impossible. Why? Because we're limited. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of the owners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is closer to us than our own vein, as he stated in the Quran, subhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Malik. So when we talk to our children about this, then the children, our kids, will fall in love with this. Who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So many things to talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our, our great creator and our Lord. So, the first blessing is the blessing of faith and a homework is to start with our children. Talk to your children about Jannah before you talk to them about Nar. Talk to your children about Ismillah al-Alim wa Ismillah al-Sami' wa Ismillah al-Basir. Ismillah al-Rahim wa rahman What's the difference between al-Rahim and rahman Ismillah al-Malik and Ismillah al-Azim. So all of these great names start with this simple, simple knowledge, very simple knowledge. But Allah has a great impact, insha'Allah ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم. بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. You know, uh, for the sake of the time, I wanted to talk a lot about the second blessing, which is the blessing of, of, of health. But I will give my next few minutes to talk more about the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, if Allah wills, to meet you again, then we will continue, insha'Allah ta'ala. The knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many beautiful names. There is, there is, there is a tafsir surat al-Fatiha. There is a surah that we recite at least 17 times a day. The first is chapter of the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha. And I believe that we should, we should start teaching our sons and our daughters the meaning of this Surah. I am not saying that we shouldn't focus on the memorization. Memorization is essential, it's great. But what's more important is to understand and to feel this connection with Kitab Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what's more important. So many Sahaba, so many companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they didn't even memorize the Quran. They didn't even memorize half of it. They didn't even memorize quarter of it. They didn't even memorize uh, 10 surahs. And Khalid ibn al-Walid is one of the greatest Sahaba in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he wasn't half of it. But he understood the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was able to implement it. Again, I am not saying that the memorization, we shouldn't focus on the memorization. Absolutely not. 
Because we have to memorize it and we have to encourage our kids to memorize it for the Quran to be preserved inshallah until the day of judgment. There is no doubt about this. But sometimes we focus on the memorization and we neglect the tafsir, the meaning of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Al-Fatiha, if Allah wills, we'll talk more about Surah Al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillah. What Alhamdulillah means? By the way, this is still the knowledge of Allah. Alhamdulillah. What Alhamdulillah means? What Alhamdulillah means? So many things to talk about the word Alhamd. The word Alhamd is so powerful. So powerful. And I believe that our youth have to understand this since younger age. The word of Alhamd. The word of Alhamd. Alhamd, briefly, very briefly, means three things. Sometimes we think that Alhamd means to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And which is correct. But this is not the full answer. The full answer is Alhamd means that yes, we're thankful to Allah. Alhamd means that all praises due to Allah. Every single thing in this world, all of Allah's creatures praises Him. The malaika, the angels praise Him. The trees praise Him. The leaves praise Him. The, the rivers praise Him. The oceans praise Him. Everything in this world praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except some of the human beings which, which, is, which is very interesting. Those who are denying the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Th th this is alhamd. So everything praise Allah, all praise due to Allah, being thankful to Allah, and everything belongs to Allah. And why? We can actually, actually inshallah, talk about it in different occasions. So to wrap this up, the knowledge of Allah is very essential. It is crucial to teach our children, our daughters, our sons, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to even teach ourselves as well, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's start with this. Let's start in the core. Let's focus in the core. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our own sons and daughters. Say ameen. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك وحبيبك محمد في الأولين وصل عليه في الآخرين وصل عليه في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين وأقم الصلاة Assalamu alaikum. Just a few quick announcements. Inshallah, we'd like to see all of you tonight after Isha. Um, our Imam Yusuf Bakir, who is a graduate of Al Azhar University, a very learned person. He's among us and he'll be enlightening us uh, on a topic creation leads to creator. And we'll inshallah serve you dinner too. So please come all tonight. And tomorrow, we'd like to see all the youth, their parents, and the families on a Muslim on ice, which is a family ice skating day. Only Muslims, so you'll enjoy. Uh, last year we had a very good attendance. We'd like to see all of you come and enjoy that too. Please arrive about 15 minutes early. Event starts at 12 o'clock. It'll be in RDV in Maitland. Tickets are $10 per person. That includes skates, snacks, and drinks. Contact Brother Riyadh, our youth coordinator, for more information. Uh, the ladies halaqa which was planned for tomorrow is currently postponed so we'll keep you updated about the next date uh, important thing about the amcc board of director elections uh, the nomination papers uh, or uh, forms are out in the lobby if you are a member you like to nominate somebody for the board of uh, director position please fill out the form if you want to nominate yourself you can do so too um, and let us know as soon as possible the deadline is february 28 and just to let you know that our evening hit the school, which is uh, Monday through Friday, is still ongoing, 4.30 to 6 p.m. Please enroll your children for Nazira Quran and Hiv. Um, the new program, Mommy and Me, has started, designed for toddlers and up to learn, play, and interact in an Islamic environment. Please contact Sister Saida. 
I have to let you know that the next door hall, which is the multi-purpose hall, is always available for rental for your private parties, such as weddings, akhika, etc. So please uh, reach us, um, reach out to us if you like to rent the hall. If you're not the member of AMCC, we would like you to become a member. You can go online and uh, pay your dues. It's only fifty dollars a month for a family, um, or you can stop by the kiosk and pay your membership dues. Uh, your donations help us run the masjid, organize these excellent programs, and continue our youth and outreach activities. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum.